Good afternoon, everyone. So a question I'm seeing and a lot of discussion that comes up is what's going to happen to this war when winter inevitably comes? And it's on its way. It's rearing its head. Right now, Ukraine is in what's called mud season. And this isn't like your standard, oh, it's kind of muddy out. Put on your, your uh, rain boots. Check this out. So you can see that is a significant amount of mud. And this isn't just easy mud to maneuver through. That is bogging down any kind of offensive operations, whether it's Russia's or Ukraine's. But inevitably, we're going to move into winter. The ground will freeze. Traditionally, from November to March is when the winter season comes in Ukraine. And a lot of people kind of mistakenly think well, the war will kind of wind down through that period briefly until it picks up in the summer again. It's not necessarily the case. In fact, there's no real historical pre precedence for that taking place. The Russians and the Finns fought a war strictly in winter. From November 1939 to March 1940, they fought the Winter War. And both sides saw successes. Inevitably, Russia took 9% of uh, Finland's territory, but at a huge cost and lost lives. Another big uh, example is the Battle of the Bulge, which took place. It was really the last major German offensive, and it ran from December through January of uh, December of 1944 to January of 1945. That's the dead center of freezing winter, especially if you're in uh, the German Belgian uh, Luxembourg region, which is where that battle took place. So. It's happened before. Winter doesn't stop militaries. Winters don't stop the ambitions of commanders and the ambitions of despots from trying to take territory. And it doesn't stop the, the uh, morale and the want of the defenders to defend their territory. So the reality is, is I just don't see this slowing down. Now, Russia and Ukraine are going to have different strategies with what's coming out of this, this winter. Russia's aim is to draw the, the war out through the winter in the hopes that they can cause, use energy as a strategy. They're hoping to, there's a two front war on energy strategy here. The first is within Ukraine. They're hoping that they can eliminate and destroy Ukrainian energy infrastructure so people are freezing. And for a long time, stockpiles of wood, stockpiles of winter clothing and blankets and the preparations have been taking place in anticipation of this happening, but it's still going to be a painful and, di and difficult winter because many Ukrainians are displaced from their homes or living in damaged residences, meaning that winter can ravage them a little bit more than what would have been. This Also, this idea of denying energy or denying heat during the coldest months of the war is a terroristic tactic to pressure the Ukrainian government for a ceasefire or some other kind of accommodations to the Russian invaders. But it rarely has this worked. The Ukrainians are very hardy, and they've actually been some, through some really terrible conditions through the Soviet era, through World War II, and it tends to galvanize populations. Similar situations took place in Blitz, the Blitzkrieging Germans, where they were trying to freeze out other countries that were opposing them. Instead, it brought the countries together and they worked through it. So I don't think this outcome is going to be very good for Russia, or as good as they thought it was going to be. Now, the other strategic impact is he's trying to freeze out or cause greater issues for the populations of Europe, who is obviously reliant on Russian energy. However, there's been an uptick of new energy sources coming into Europe. I mean, they found new partners, they found new countries, other countries have stepped up to supply Europe with its needed natural gas and oil, etc. So uh, I just read recently, uh, Germany is at 97% capacity, which means they'll make it through the winter through this. And make no mistake, if Europe and Ukraine can make it through this winter, this is the last winter that they will have to do this as a reliance on Russian energy, and it will likely devastate Russia going forward. So everyone just has to kind of stay strong through this. Now, going to the other side, 
with Russia just digging in, trying to maintain its territory, it's not going to conduct any offensive operations. It may try to take Bakhmud, it may try to do something in the Donetsk region, but largely Kharkiv, Kherson, those regions are just not going to be offensive operations. The Ukrainian strategy, from what I can tell, is to not slow down. Now, the mud is slowing them down, but not slow down in their own maneuvers. They are at the whims of the weather, obviously, but when the weather breaks, when the weather goes in their favor, they move. Ukraine is trying to push this fight, take this fight to the Russians because they don't want to become stalemated, especially in the eyes of their supporters who will say, well, this is a stalemated fight. We're not going to continue to support them. So they're trying to avoid that. Now, the temperatures that are in Ukraine tend to hover between zero and 32 but they do drop below zero the other problem is is the shorter daylight hours cold affects soldiers actually you burn more calories as a soldier trying to stay warm because you're shivering or just generally trying to trudge through crummy terrain that's wet or snowy or icy so they will need warm clothing and hot food and then strong protection from the elements for them to continue and they've been getting that from their partners which is good another issue is is vehicle mobility wheeled vehicles especially i mean everyone knows getting stuck in the mud sucks military wheeled vehicles are no different they're a little bit more capable obviously but that's going to be a problem i can tell you right now from personal experience humvees are terrible in the snow so if um, snow is going to slow military vehicles down. Tracked vehicles won't be as affected. Uh, they actually might thrive in a condition like this because tracked vehicles create their own roads, essentially. They just can do that type of stuff. However, there will be maintenance issues, and I'll come to that as well. Fuel consumption elevates, which can stress logistics lines trying to with soldiers trying to stay warm at command posts. Side note, when you're warming a command post, it means on thermal drone imagery, you can see that command post. Actually, soldiers silhouette on thermal imagery a lot better in the winter because the ground is all very cold and you're still the same temperature. So uh, that will play into the favor of the Ukrainians who are using thermal imagery a lot more so than the Russians. But back to fuel consumption. Um, If your command post is glowing on thermal imagery, it means there's just a call for fire waiting to happen and you have no more command post. Fuel consumption grows as it takes long to, longer to move on snowy and icy routes, to recover vehicles, to cook the hot food that is necessary. Concealment in winter is also difficult. Foliage disappears as all the dark green uniforms you have kind of go to shit when you become everything becomes white. And you stand out against the snow, just like you stand out in those thermal imaging. It also makes it more difficult for drones and aerial other aerial vehicles and even fighters to fly because cold weather tends to bring more adverse weather rainy conditions snowy conditions so that becomes more difficult uh cold weather injuries this is something that in the military we had to always be aware of Uh, frostbite an ill-prepared russian military or even ill-prepared ukrainian forces uh, are going to fight have to deal with frostbite I think it's going to affect Russia a lot more because Russia has been taught to suck it up and they will lose these soldiers to cold injuries. Dehydration can set in as well because the cold lulls you into thinking that you're not thirsty and the water can freeze and you may even sweat and if you sweat if you have too much hot weather or cold weather gear on and you're sweating in it. The, another huge problem is maintenance because without heated maintenance tents, soldiers must be on an elevated work rest cycle. Otherwise, fingers get too cold, their bodies get too cold, and they can even get frostbitten by touching frozen equipment. Further morale drops from that. Some equipment can't even be worked on until it thaws. Cold-induced brittleness is something that advanced militaries, such as the U.S., account for. Without warming tents, parts can break, uh, bolts can snap, and thus they're required equipment. There's a required equipment thawing time. Now, these thawing times can range from 2 to 12 hours. Even with warming tents, this slows the maintenance cycle down significantly for both sides. So cold is going to play a part, but I think it advantages Ukraine. Uh when the ground is frozen, but it advantages the Russian defense when it's not. This is why, even though the fighting is going to continue, I don't think it's going to be as massive of movements, especially when it's muddy. This is why we're not seeing a lot of movements. So winter is going to affect it, but the war is not going to stop, unfortunately, for uh, anyone.